Whenever I make an exhibition, I、um, increasingly I just think of it as a, a space to fill up with stuff. And、um, yeah, I, I'm best known for making drawings, and in a way, that's the centre of what I do. But if I just made drawings all the time, I'd never have the opportunity to make a big show in a place like the NGV. So I make objects as well. I studied at the Glasgow School of Art in the late 1980s, a school with a very strong figurative. Painting tradition. I don't demonstrate really any many craft skills in my work now. People often ask, say, "Are you an outsider artist or something like that?" And I, I say, "Well, no. I did learn to draw. I guess it's just not really that important. Objective drawing. The way that I draw now is the same way as I drew when I was a young child. It's just, you know, the easiest route possible to say what you want to say." It's essentially born of a decision not to、um, objectively render three dimensions.、Um, it's they're only rendered as as、um, as competently as they need to be. I want to make images that don't illustrate the text and text that doesn't describe the image. I'm interested in some slippage of meaning between image and text. When we look at images, the images that we're surrounded by, they all come with text these days. You know, on 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 the computer, on billboards, on the TV. It's a mode that we're, you know, one is instinctively familiar with. So I think maybe that's what makes the work quite accessible: is that people are, are familiar with that. Anyway. In some ways, I've suffered、uh, critically because my work is has a very comic strand to it. Earlier in my career, I, I was I, I kind of denied the the comic nature of it. I wanted people to know that the work was serious somehow.、Um, but I think that increasingly, I've come to understand that comedy is sublime. It's special. It's、um, it's very important. It's something that we need. It's the one sense that you can't do without is your sense of humour. I think about that particularly when I'm interviewed and talking about the work. And the conclusion I've come to is that、um, the opposite of comedy isn't seriousness, and the opposite of seriousness isn't comedy. The opposite of seriousness is、um, dilettantism or incompetence, and then the opposite of comedy. Of humour is, is sadness, austerity, misery. Hopefully, the work communicates about sometimes quite important things. I suppose if you just make work that is just comic, then、um, it's just its only function is to promote laughter, engender laughter.、Um, obviously, I suppose that isn't really the activity I'm involved in solely. There's a lot of Um, angst and misery and melancholy and all、um, all aspects of the human condition, all aspects of my emotional makeup are, are there in the work. And sometimes I, I suppose there's some real darkness there,、um, real gallows humour and、uh, very thinly coded despair, almost. You know. But I think that the comedy is the one thing that、uh, is the one hook that keeps you、um, keeps you alive, <laughs> I suppose, when you want to talk about these things. It's hard to talk about the subject matter of my work because it comes about very intuitively. So、um, the very、uh, I don't know, quotidian, if that's the right word. Aspects of existence are things that I, I tend to dwell upon. You know, just the bodily functions, very basic emotions and dramas,、um, love and sex and death. You know, the work's made in a very、um, economic way, but it, the subject of it is 
is something that's very close at hand. I suppose you could say, you know, when I'm making a sculpture of a woman doing a poo, <laughs> that's something, you know, that's very much about the human condition and la di da di da. Um, but there's also something obviously very childish about it as well. I don't really want to say too much about the work because I think it, it is what you think it is. And, and whatever, you know, whatever conversation you want to have about it is, is totally fine. I, I tend to say as little as possible. I'm not, you know, I'm not really interested in, or I am interested in there being multiple um, understandings of a work. I don't, I'm not the kind of person who would write a press release about my own exhibition. I first started making books when I first left art school in 1991. I didn't really make drawings as part of my art practice. It was something private that I did in, in a sketchbook that I'd always done my entire life, but I sort of kept it a secret at art school and um, felt that it was a bit frowned upon. But once I left art school, I realised I could do whatever I liked. Nobody was going to tell me what to do. Um, so, so I decided that I would just make this work because it was very economic in a, in a physical sense. It, was, it fitted in with, with my economic circumstances. I could make drawing in my room, in my shared apartment. So I sort of adapted what I drew anyway into a sort of what I thought was a more formal cartoon thing. So, and the way of distributing that, because this was prior to the days of the internet, was to publish, self-publish. Quite quickly of making these books, I realized that I, I really liked the, the, um, the structure of a book and the way that you can um, create narrative and allow, guide people through it's also quite an accessible thing, a book as well, in a way that perhaps an exhibition isn't to everybody. Visiting a gallery sometimes is quite intimidating, particularly to people who aren't familiar with the world of contemporary art. The centerpiece of this exhibition is the, the life model piece. And um, I, I made that piece a couple of years ago for an exhibition um, which was sort of nominally about art therapy. All the works had a, often an interactive element to them and this one was just you know, drawing as art therapy, drawing being a good thing for people to do, making art being a good thing for people to do, a healthy thing. The nice thing about this work is that it, it, it is an invitation for art. I mean, all conceptual art, I suppose, exists in some way as a, as a proposition. And that's some ways, for some people, that's quite difficult just to, just to be invited to consider a proposition. They feel slightly baffled or intimidated by it. Obviously, this work exists as a proposition as well. It's sort of saying, what if, you know, what, do, what, what role does the, do these drawings have in relation to this object that the artist has made and blah, blah, blah. And I like the fact that these drawings are a metaphor for that. They're a metaphor for people's view of the work. And they're all different. And some of them are kind of daft and silly and have got ridiculous comments on them. And others are, are quite, uh, quite serious um, objective drawings of, of quite high quality in some cases. I'm still sort of coming to understand what the work is. Um, quite often you get bored of a work, I think, when you make it and you, you travel around the world with it. You just get sick of the sight of it. And for some reason, this work, I don't. I, there's always something new because it's surrounded by new artwork all the time. Yeah, it's a piece that I, I still have great affection for, as if the life model were, were a friend, you know? <laughs> the piece beginning, middle and end, which is uh, abbreviated as the sausage in my oeuvre. Um, I made it in a, in a Kunsthal in Mainz. I was interested in making something very intuitive and improvised in the space and just wanted to make, be in a space and make something there um, in a very 
sort of setting myself quite a task, really. I was, I was aware that the curator probably wouldn't let me do this, so I lied and basically said I wanted to make a sculpture. I had an idea for a sculpture, I just, and it required me making it in the space with wet clay. And um, they were like, yeah, cool, could you send us an image, or some draw, drawings maybe? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. And um, two weeks later, no drawings. Could you send us those drawings? Like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that, I'll do that. Uh, two weeks later, it's two weeks before the show, um, sent me an email and I just ignored it and showed up. <laughs> and then they were like, I was there in the space and they stopped asking because they're like, well, you know, the die is cast, <laughs> that's two tons of clay. Let's see what he's going to do. And I basically messed around with the clay and, and these uh, interns. I don't know, it just became the thing to make, I suppose. It was just like, what do you do with loads of clay? You just roll it into a big sausage in the kindergarten sculpture way. And then I started thinking about, well, it could just be one thing. I wonder how long it would be <laughs> if I made this, all of this clay into a sausage. And it turns out it's about 400 meters long. So it's just become a work that sort of was made by accident in a way, or, or at least by some f deliberate improvisation. The new works on paper in this show are, are really new works, a very, quite a new format. I only really started working on that size this year, really. Um, so it's the first time I've made a, a big group of really large works. I make the paintings on paper so that I can discard them and not be precious about them. And obviously, I'm, I guess a big part of what I do is to try and avoid contrivance. And I'm trying, striving for the opposite of that, for some kind of um, intuitive, accidental um, moment. They have a size that sort of lends themselves to a statement somehow, because they're sort of poster size. They're, they're like, um, they're like paintings, but sometimes, but they're also like, I don't know, inform, you know public information posters. Um, so I'm sort of responding just to the size of the, the page and also the materials that I'm working with and the, the texture of the paper. So yeah, they have a certain presence in the space that I wasn't quite expecting, and we ended up double hanging them, which wasn't quite the way I'd imagined it to start with, but they, they seem quite to have a really big presence that I'm, I'm sort of slightly surprised by. I guess I'm looking at them now in the space, so still digesting them and, you know, thinking about what they are and thinking about what I'll do next, um, which, which is nice. It's the way you want to, to be. It's nice to feel that you're at the beginning of a process rather than at the end. Made a piece in this show uh, called Napping Station. It's not an artwork, it's just a place where you can take a nap. Um, I think as you get older, it's more it becomes, it's good to take a nap. Um, I have a napping station in my studio and uh, I, I sometimes take a little nap, sometimes with the dog. And uh, yeah, we have, we doss off for 20 minutes and then I feel revitalized afterwards and I hope that people will take the opportunity to have a little nap and uh, make them feel better afterwards, better able to, you know, appreciate the works. But I like the way that if you're lying there and in the space having a little kip, <laughs> that you sort of become like a sculpture and also you're on the list of works, even though it's not really an artwork. Uh, I like the fact that you, you've become um, a little, performance piece and that's that's kind of nice makes me makes me laugh <laughs>